Airbus doesn't have to just think about missions taking place today, but it has to look well ahead to what it'll be doing in 30 or 40 years from now. A typical example is FCAS, Future Combat Air Systems, which is involving fighter planes working alongside drones. But the person in charge of this program is Bruno Fischfu. Let's go talk to him about that. So this is actually a remote carrier. It's part of the Future Combat Air System, and it helps us to symbolize the fact that Future Combat Air System is not only a fighter. It's much more than that. It's a combination of different assets. You will have a newly to be developed fighter, which we will do together with Dassault. It will be um, supported by a whole fleet of remote carriers in all size. So here you have one example of it, which could be dropped by A400M. And if you join me, you could see it would drop from the A400M, then open its wings and then perform a mission around the aircraft, supporting it in the most threat areas of future scenarios. This must be very complex because you have to look at something you'll be involved in in 30 or 40 years from now. And that's a big challenge actually, because today we are discussing with our customers what future threat scenarios will be. They give us some input, but it's based on, on what we know today. This system, the remote carrier, the, uh, the new fighter, managed through a combat cloud will be operating in 2040, 50, 60, 70, 80. Who knows how the future looks like? So the big challenge for us is to develop technologies that will not be obsolete in 2040 and beyond. So to develop a system which is open, which is flexible, which is adaptable for future upgrade and new developments. You've just made a big announcement about involvement of Spain in this project and how things are advancing with Dassault Aviation. So the big announcement was twofold. The first one was on the state level, the governments. So it was a signature by the ministers of defense of France, Germany and Spain, signing a framework agreement, engaging their country for a 10 years development uh, of technologies and demonstrators in the program. So that's one from the, the nation side. The other one was the industry side, where both the CEOs of Airbus Defense and Space and Dassault signed an industrial agreement on how do we want to work for the demonstrator phase, which we hope will start already this year. Is this all about making sure that Europe has its own security system and is in charge of what they have actually in terms of air power? Yes, so all the program is about European sovereignty. It's about providing the European armed forces with a solution that they control and that keep them the capacity to maintain air superiority. And the other one is also developing competences in uh, edge technologies in the industry to keep industry-wise our strategic autonomy. So it's twofold. Thanks, Bruno. Before you go, uh, let's go. I have two messages for you. First, let's have a look on how FCAS will be with the future scenario. And I want to show you also which companies are involved in the program today. So as you see here, at the helm, you have Airbus and Dassault as prime companies. And we have involvement of German and French companies in, in the concept studies today with the German and French Air Force. Here you see a potential scenario of the future that we are displaying to our customers from all nations for them to project themselves in the future. This is all about all the systems on FCAS being connected. It's all about connectivity indeed. It's about how do we gather data from all the platforms, connect them together, transmit this data, then analyze it using, for example, AI algorithm to support the pilot in making the best decision for the success of the mission.